when it comes to ITX build, we want to build the system as small as possible. Even though there are a lot of cases out there that come in small form factor for ITX parts, but sometimes it can be a bit troublesome if you want to find the right parts, especially for the cooler itself or small form factor power supply. And here we have the NZXT H1, which was announced last week. Instead of being just an ITX case, this is actually a full solution, almost full solution for you if you want to be an ITX case. Let's talk about that. So what's so special about the NZXT H1 here? So if you can see what I have here, this is the actual H1. It's smaller than I've expected when, you know, when it was announced, we saw the news everywhere, people posting about it. When I got my hands on this, it's actually very surprising. It's so small, it's even smaller than uh, my personal ITX build, which I'm very intrigued to build my own build in one if I get to own. For this case, we can see that it has a tempered glass front panel and a lot of mesh around the case itself. Three sides of mesh and one side of tempered glass. So what do we have on the outside? At first, you can see that we have an audio jack. This is probably a combo for your headphones and mic. One type C, one type A and your power button. They could use a little bit more, I say here, because usually if you have a lot of pair panels, it's best to have maybe around three three USB ports at the front. It'll be better if they have more here. But let's see what's inside. Taking this thing apart will require a little bit, not to say challenge, but care, because this is a tempered glass panel. You don't want to break it. So it's a clip-on design where you have to remove it from the clip, like what I did here. I won't say it's quite thick, but there's a weight to it. So removing the glass panel, you can see that the interior is quite uh, compact but we'll see what's inside later. The other side is another panel which can be removed in the same manner as well. Remove the clip and there you go. The mesh of this side is actually a very thick piece of metal here. You can see the thickness. Quite rigid, surprisingly good. So after we got both panels removed, this is when you can remove this unibody, I would say. Entire panel. All you have to do is hold it down here, give it a little bit shake, and you can remove it. Slide it up. There's a rail design on this part, so be careful. And you're done with it. So inside, you have a uh, Okay, this is the accessories box. You have all you need to build your system here. Let's see what's inside. Okay, you have a power cord, quite, quite standard I will say, because you have a power supply included, so they give you one. Then what else do you get? Ah, so these are a bag of zip ties cables for front I.O. and a combo audio jack. It's basically a Y splitter so you can use your existing peripherals without any interruption. Then the other pack is basically uh, the mounting bracket because they do include an A.I.O. together with this case. So this is all you need to install it onto your motherboard. With all those accessories available, you also have this pretty lengthy user manual. So, if you don't know how to get things installed into the case, just open it up, take your time, read everything, and probably you're good to go. So, now let's move into what's inside the case. So, here at the back of the case, there's a compartment for your graphics card. Since it's a different compartment for your graphics card, they actually included a riser. This is not just any budget cheap riser you can get from Taobao or eBay or Amazon. This is actually a pretty high quality riser here. Based on the design, 
if you do PC mounting or use risers for your build, you probably know that this kind of design is quite decent PCIe riser. So moving to the back, so from here you can see that they actually included a 140mm AIO which custom made for this case. And here you have a fully modular SFX power supply, 650 watt, gold rated, pretty much enough to power almost 2080 Ti I would say. So this AIO itself is actually mounted on a bracket that's built into the case so it's very easy for you to do maintenance and everything since the air itself is tailored for the case the tubing is not going to be extremely long and you have plenty of space for airflow and you, i don't think you need to do a lot of cable management because everything is pre-prepared for you so all you have to do is just take your parts install in power up and you're good to go with the system so to build something into the case, the first thing to do is that you have to remove the two screws in the bracket so you can open up the compartment where it hides the motherboard tray. Here you can see that it's quite spacious, surprisingly, with the block, the riser, everything. Even you have this Velcro ties that keeps all the cables on the power supply intact, well managed, very neat, and you probably don't even have to worry about airflow issues with this case. Okay, so before we move into the build, here's our choice of component for the build today. For the motherboard, we'll be using the MSI Z370i Pro Carbon AC Wi Fi, quite a lengthy name, but this is one of the best ITS what we have in the lab for now. CPU will be using the Intel uh, i7-9700K SSD, just any SSD will do So for the memory, we have the Adata XPG Spectrix D80 Liquid Cool RAM And for the graphics card, of course, we'll be trying to slot in the RTX 2080 Super Founders Edition inside My apologies for cutting in, but we have changed the graphics card to RTX 2060 Super because that is what you guys recommended So let's move on with the build So there you have it. This is our final build result with the NZXT H1. So personally, I think it looks great. Compared to any past ITX build I've done, this is definitely a different experience because one thing is that even though it looks really small, thin, but if you look at the interior design and the kind of layout they provide, it's seriously one of the best experience I have in building an ITX build. So the first thing to highlight on the build is that unlike most of the ITX build we have in the past, cable management is seriously the easiest one I would say. Because normally when we have an ITX build, the cable is going to be everywhere cluttering here and there. If you're not using a full modular power supply, it's going to be even worse. So for this one, it came with SFX power supply, small form factor power supply itself, 650 watt gold, enough to power quite a lot of graphics card up there. 
cable length is specially tailored for the design itself so it's not super lengthy and everything is just right in the way so it doesn't obstruct any airflow plus with all the mesh on the three sides i mean you have tempered glass at the front to show how pretty is the components inside but the mesh is the one that is contributing to the airflow because as you know if you have four tempered glass panel on this form factor uh, i would say it's gonna burn your stuff it's not gonna burn your stuff but the heat building up in the system itself is gonna be a lot so this is a really good design i would say so with the aio included it actually helps to push and pull hot air out from the case i mean it feeds fresh air into the case while getting the hot air out with the air pressure that's providing into the case so at least you have constant fresh air getting fed in the system instead of you know getting all the hot air trapped inside don't know where to go and seriously i would say this is probably my choice of itx case to go for for probably this year 2020 so now down to the price I would say it's fairly acceptable because at the price of 350 US not only that you get very beautifully designed compact ITX case NZXT provide you with a riser good quality one I would say small form factor power supply 650 watt 80 plus gold more than enough to power quite a lot of powerful graphics card out there nice airflow and of course the AIO itself is gonna cost you quite a, quite a few bucks, 100 bucks to get the AIO itself and sometimes you can't even get the proper AIO to fit in an ITX case this is specially tailored for the case itself so I would say instead of buying an ITX case from an NZXT you're actually buying an ITX solution save you the trouble and everything and you can seriously build an ITX system way much easier than how we experienced it in the past. So that concludes our first impression, build experience and all sorts with the NZXT H1. Personally, I like the case a lot. If you do like the case as well, do let us know in the comment below. And if you would like to see more contents like this in the future, do hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.